At first, the key seemed not to fit, but slowly it turned. The latch yielded to pressure, and Nathan swung the door open. A terrified girl with blonde hair sprang off the lower bunk. <gasps> Don't you dare scream. I'm here to free you. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I'll need help. You know how many others are locked in these cabins? I, I, well, let me think. I, Make it quick. We don't have much time. There was 15 of us to start, but there were stops. I, I don't know if there... <laughs> we'll find out. Help me calm the others. We don't have time for tears. Nathan led her into the corridor and began unlocking doors. <laughs> Fortunately, some of the women were quick to realize they were being freed and were helping to quiet the others. The garments of some were in tatters, some were stripped to the waist, and from their cuts and bruises, all appeared to have been in some way abused. Once they were on the open deck, there must be no delays. All of you are going to have to climb down a rope into a small boat. It'll be crowded. When I cut you loose, take the oars and push your boat away from the steamboat until the current pulls you downstream. A government boat is waiting to take you aboard. Now let's go. Minutes counted. Nathan dared not tell them that should the Queen of Diamonds back away from the landing before the current carried the dinghy away, the little boat would be sucked under and demolished by the huge paddle wheel. They reached the point on the open deck where the heavy rope led to the dinghy below. Its shape was barely visible in the dark, and some of the newly freed captives were looking fearfully toward the dark water that seemed farther away than it was. You can see the boat down there. Who wants to go first? I will. <laughs> Nathan helped her over the rail, gripping her shoulders until she was able to take hold of the heavy rope. She went down the rope too quickly, and her feet struck with such force she almost capsized the dinghy. It righted itself, and Nathan could see her pale face below. She made it, so can the rest of you. They loaded the dinghy surprisingly well, with Nathan keeping one eye on the forward deck. When the last of the captives had joined the others in the boat, Nathan pulled the slip knot, gratified to see them using the oars to propel the dinghy away from the hull of the Queen of Diamonds. Slowly, the eddying current pulled the dinghy toward open water. Close to the farthest bank, the packet lurked without running lights and was all but invisible. The Queen was about to depart. By now, Nathan hoped the small government vessel had taken aboard the women occupants of the drifting dinghy. Nathan now had but one task remaining. Taking the canister of powder, he crept along the narrow catwalk until he was directly behind the huge paddle wheel. He was outside the deck rail, and he hoisted the canister of powder up onto the deck, next to an iron upright that supported the rail. With the length of rope that he brought for that purpose, he bound the canister to the iron upright. That put the charge where, if it did nothing else, it would permanently disable the craft. Nathan made his way back along the catwalk, trailing the fuse until it ran out. He was but a few steps from the open side of the lower deck, and here he would remain until he'd lit the fuse. It seemed Captain Powers was about to get Stumberg's attention. Get your rifles ready! When that close enough, fire! But Captain Tolliver had expected that. He remained just far enough behind to make shooting uncertain, but near enough for Captain Powers to issue his challenge through a megaphone. This is Captain Powers, representing the Attorney General's Office of the United States of America. We have a federal arrest warrant for French Stumberg, and federal John Doe arrest warrants for every man on board. If you refuse to submit to arrest, we'll sink you! We have hostages on board! A hostile move from you and they die! You have no hostages! This is your last chance! Danvers, Odom, Dawson, bring me three of the women and do it fast! Nathan waited only to hear Stumberg's reaction when he was told his hostages were gone. He was in a position where he couldn't be seen unless they came looking for him. But the three men Stumberg had sent to the lower deck didn't think of that. They hastened to report the shocking news. God! God! Damn it, Fraser! You and Watkins get the wraps off the Gatlin gun and be prepared to fire! They will come to us, then by God I'll turn this boat around and we'll go after them! Nathan heard no more. He had no idea how swiftly the Queen of Diamonds could reverse her course, but if she were close enough, the blast might take the government packet with it. As swiftly as he could, Nathan again crept along the catwalk until he reached the end of the trailing fuse. Stumberg's Gatling gun on the main deck had tilted the odds, and they no longer had ten minutes. 
With his knife, Nathan cut away a third of the fuse and lighted the rest. It greatly reduced his escape time, and his life was in the hands of Captain Tolliver. Reaching the open deck, he leaped the rail and plummeted into the cold, dark water. 